This is the Orion 6. It is my first attempt at a two-stage rocket configuration. It's a scratch-built model which has a dry mass of approximately 72 grams and stands roughly 60 centimeters tall. Just like my previous rocket, the Orion 5, I built it several years ago, but I was unable to fly it on my regular flying field due to the extra altitude it would gain, not to mention its experimental nature. It's for that reason that I joined the Canberra Rocketry Group for a larger property for this test flight. This rocket is primarily built out of cardboard and balsa wood, making it quite lightweight. Now, unfortunately, I only have photos of the build process, but I'll quickly run through what that process was. Firstly, I marked and cut where the two stages of the rocket would be. Then I went ahead and cut all of the other tubular components, such as the two motor mounts, as well as the stage coupler which interfaces the stages together at launch. Next, I assembled the motor mounts with the centering rings before moving on to the upper stage fins. For extra stability at liftoff, I went with a four-way symmetry for the fins since there would be additional mass at the rear of the rocket at liftoff. And these were cut from templates printed directly from Open Rocket, where I designed the rocket prior to construction to make sure everything was functional. I then designed and printed a custom fin alignment jig, which was pretty important for this design, since the first and second stage fins were designed to satisfyingly fit together to form essentially four large fins. With all eight fins sanded down to the proper shape, they were adhered to the body tubes with wood glue, before receiving some nice wood glue fillets. With that tedious part out of the way, I inserted and glued each motor mount and ensured they were positioned just right. With that, I moved on to the recovery equipment, so gluing the shock cord in the inside of the airframe and attaching the parachute and nose cone with a couple non-tangling swivel connectors. Finally, it was time for painting and finishing. For the colour scheme, I went for white and a bright flashy orange as the highlight colour, and I personally think it turned out great. And we all know that stripes make the rocket go faster. Now, the way the staging mechanism works on this rocket is actually pretty simple. It's essentially an entirely passive system which relies on the mechanics of the rocket motors themselves and friction. To operate this rocket, two particular types of black powder motors are needed. The first stage uses what's known as a booster engine. This means the engine itself has just a slug of propellant with no delay charge or end cap. This means as the propellant is depleted, once it reaches the very end of its burn, only a small disc remains. At this point, there is an immense amount of pressure behind this disc of propellant, and it essentially bursts forward almost instantly, subsequently firing hot gas and chunks of propellant out the other end of the motor. It's this very feature that allows the second stage motor to ignite. The nozzle of the second stage motor is seated right at the forward end of the booster motor, and those hot gases and chunks of propellant make their way into the nozzle, igniting the motor. So, in order, the first stage engine ignites and burns through its propellant. Once depleted, the ejection of hot gases ignites the sustainer engine and almost instantly separates the two entire stages due to the large amount of pressure in the interstage, leaving the second stage motor to continue to push the rocket along its flight. The second stage motor in the case of this rocket is one that features a longer delay charge to account for the additional speed and altitude. For this test flight, I selected an Estes C60 as the booster engine and a B66 as the sustainer engine. These two motors are even taped together with a small amount of masking tape to ensure a good pressure seal between the two and to make sure they remain in contact. When it comes to recovery, the first stage itself has quite a low mass and high surface area, so it's recovered by tumble recovery, which is no problem. The second stage uses just a traditional parachute. With all of that out of the way, it was time to pack everything up and head to the launch site. Stage on a C60 and a B66. Alrighty. We have a continuity. We're launching five, four, three, two, one. Oh, it's not too bad. Oh, 
Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, oh, look. Just here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had blue wadding on this one. Oh, look at where it landed in a nice cradle. Here it is. And it's glory. So, as you could tell, everything worked perfectly for this first flight. Both the first and second stages were recovered not far from the launch site, completely undamaged. I was actually a little skeptical about flying this rocket, but a big part of why I didn't run into any issues and why I was okay flying it on this day was the excellent weather conditions. The skies were completely clear and there was virtually no wind. In fact, I was able to recover all of the spent recovery wadding since it landed right around the upper stage. You see, the issue with multi-stage rockets, and particularly when there's any sort of breeze, you run into the risk of the rocket pitching into the wind during the first stage burn, and turning the second stage into a cruise missile, most likely to never be seen again. Or if your rocket is unstable in the first place, it can descend into whatever this scenario is. Do that light, do that light, do that light. Thankfully, I was able to avoid this due to the favorable weather conditions. One thing I might consider changing for the next flight is perhaps an aft retainer for the booster motor, since it did get ejected from the first stage at stage separation. But don't worry, we still managed to find the motor on recovery. But why do we bother with complex staging systems in rockets in the first place? Well, there's a reason why so far every orbital class rocket has had at least more than one stage. And that can be explained by a simple formula called Tsiolkovsky's rocket equation. This equation relates delta v, which is essentially the total change in velocity the rocket can perform in meters per second, to the exhaust velocity and the natural logarithm of the initial mass of the rocket with propellant, or wet mass, and the final mass, or dry mass. I won't go into detail about how this equation is derived, since there are plenty of resources online that explain that very well, but I will demonstrate how this equation can help us understand why staging is so effective. Now, since delta v is the total change in velocity, we want to maximize it if we want our rocket to go further. The exhaust velocity basically characterizes the efficiency of the rocket engine. A higher exhaust velocity means more efficiency, so higher delta v. And since it's a factor in this equation, it adds up. However, in the case of the Orion 6, I'm using store-bought motors with a fixed exhaust velocity. So let's focus on what we can control, which is the mass fraction. By adopting a stage configuration, the wet mass on the launch pad is very high, since there is an additional motor, body tube, fins, and motor mount for the first stage. So the numerator M0 is larger. However, since we shed all of this mass halfway through the flight during stage separation, the dry mass remains a lot lower. This increases the value of our mass fraction, subsequently increasing our delta V. And this makes intuitive sense too, as we're lighting the second stage motor with all of this free extra velocity and altitude, all while shedding a considerable amount of mass. This also explains why it's not beneficial to simply light both motors on the launch pad for an initial higher thrust, since that creates the same increased wet mass, but significantly larger dry mass after burnout, meaning the mass fraction wouldn't be as large, and so we would have less delta V. Staging essentially allows rockets to have a much larger mass fraction than feasible with any single stage configuration, which is why it's so far been the only method to reach orbital velocity, or more accurately, a delta V of approximately 10 km per second for low Earth orbit. Thanks for watching until the end. Let me know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future, especially if you'd like to see more of the Orion 6. I'll be sure to experiment more with staging with higher power motors in the future to reach new heights and speeds. Until next time. 
See ya. Also, check out this little guy. I doubt he knew what would happen once he decided to land on the rocket right before launch.